It's in the bag is an expression we often use to express confidence in an outcome. In the bag is always our goal in cataract and refractive lens exchange surgery for the confidence of long-term stability and centration of the intraocular lens. There are many situations that demand sulcus placement of an intraocular lens rather than in the bag, such as anterior or posterior capsule tears. But standard intraocular lenses placed in the sulcus may be unstable because of the haptics being too short for the sulcus diameter. This may result in pigment or blood cells or chronic inflammation and glaucoma. I'd like to describe a technique that I call optic capture to stabilize lenses placed in the sulcus or even lenses placed in the bag that are unstable because the bag has lost its integrity. Optic capture is a term I use when IOL haptics and optic are on opposite sides of a tear-resistant opening in the capsule. This opening may be in the CCC, the PCCC, or even a capsular membrane. An example is this drawing with the haptics in the bag and the optic out of the bag. There are six options using optic capture. Two utilize the anterior CCC, two the posterior CCC, and two the fused anterior and posterior capsule into a capsular membrane. The first option is with the haptics in the sulcus and the optic pushed through the anterior capsule opening. We'll now show animation of anterior rexus fixation. You can see the optics being pushed through the anterior CCC for capturing and how it ovalizes the opening because of being wrapped around the haptic-optic junctions. The second option, the optics are again captured by the anterior CCC, but this time the haptics are in the bag and the optic is pulled out of the bag. In this animation, you see the haptics and the optics in the bag, but the large PC tear makes bag fixation uncertain. So one can merely pull the optic out of the bag to be captured by the CCC to obtain certain fixation of the intraocular lens. A variation of the uh, second option is when a piggyback lens may be necessary. Rather than leave both optics in the bag, the second optic can be pulled out of the bag, leaving the haptics in the bag. And this would avoid the development of the pearls and membrane between the two optics, because the pearls will spill out into the anterior chamber. So you can see the haptics are all in the bag, but the second optic in this animation is pulled out of the bag to be captured by the CCC. The third option is optic capture by the posterior CCC. In this case, the lens is put in the bag and then through a intact posterior capsularexis opening, the optic is pushed through that opening to be captured by the posterior CCC. We've utilized this for many years in pediatric surgery to avoid secondary cataract formation or a pacification of the visual axis by Elschnick pearls being deposited on the vitreous face. Here's a surgical example of PCCC and optic capture in a pediatric cataract surgery done in 1995. You can see the posterior capsularexis being completed. This needs to be a little smaller than the optic for good optic capture. Intraocular lens is then placed in the capsular bag. You can see then we were using one-piece PMMA lenses. Then the optic is pushed through the PCCC for capture. No vitrectomy has been performed. Helon GV in this case was protecting the vitreous. In this case a little rotation was done for better centration, but you can see the posterior capsule leaflets over the optic, so anterior and posterior CCC is over the optic. This technique used in a case of retinoblastoma treated eye with secondary cataract. 
Again, no vitrectomy was required, which made the oncologist happy. You can see the capture, and this eye has maintained a clear visual axis since that time. The fourth option, the haptics this time are in the sulcus, and the optic is then captured by the posterior capsular rexus. This can be utilized in the event of a very large anterior capsule tear, making bag fixation unstable. The PCC, again, has to be a little smaller than the optic, but the optic can be pushed through the anterior opening and posterior capsular rexus to obtain this capture and fixation and stabilization of the intraocular lens. The fifth option is optic capture by a capsular membrane. Here the haptics are in the sulcus, and the optic is pushed through the opening in the membrane to obtain fixation. The membrane opening must be slightly smaller than the optic diameter. The opening in these membranes is usually resistant to tearing because of the fibrous metaplasia that forms this fibrous ring around the opening. We'll now show a surgical example of membrane optic capture used for centration of a sulcus lens that is moved eccentrically because one haptic was in the bag and the other out of the bag. So this has to be rotated so that both haptics are in the sulcus. And then the plan is to push the optic through that opening in the membrane to stabilize the implant. The opening is just a bit marginal here for capture, but these fibrotic openings are very resistant to tearing, and one can use quite a bit of force to get the optic through the opening. The bottom is now through, and we're pushing the upper part, and you'll see it snap into place as it slides under the capsule to become fixed now with optic capture by the membrane, demonstrating here that the membrane is on top of the lens, so the lens is now behind the membrane, but the haptics are still in front of the membrane. Here's a slit lamp appearance one day postoperatively. No pseudophacodenesis. The sixth option also includes the membrane, but this time the intraocular lens haptics are behind the membrane and the optic is pushed through an opening in the membrane. Again, the opening must be just a bit smaller than the optic to be able to capture it. This technique may be utilized by vitreoretinal surgeons after vitrectomy. If the opening in the membrane is the right size, the optic may be captured for stabilization rather than being sutured or exchanged. So again, there are six basic variations of optic capture with multiple applications two utilizing the anterior CCC, two the posterior CCC, and two a capsular membrane. These techniques have multiple applications. They can be used at the time of surgery and the time capsule tears develop, and they can be used in secondary surgery when a capsular membrane is present for sulcus implantation and fixation, and they can be used when removing and replacing intraocular lenses or for centering uh, decentered lenses due to one haptic in the bag and one out of the bag. So in the absence of bag fixation, optic capture provides centration, fixation, and even a barrier to vitreous migration.